Come on in, pull up a chair and take a load off because today I'm going to review and page through Zobek Clockwork City 4 5 e d and d from Cobalt Press. Is this supplement jam-packed with urban adventuring sure to leave your 5e players satisfied? Or is Zobek Clockwork City a volume that just feels wound down? We are going to find out right after this. Howdy, gang, and welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. Thanks for joining me once again. As I mentioned in the open today, I am going to review and page through Zobek Clockwork City 4-5-E D&D from Cobalt Press. This is written by Wolfgang Bauer, James J. Hayek, Ben McFarland, and Kelly Pollock, with additional writing provided by Richard Pett, Mike Frankie, Christina Stiles, and Matthew Stinson. This 302-page hardcover is available now, carries an MSRP of $49.99, or you can grab just the PDF alone over at DriveThruRPG for $24.00 and 99 cents. Let's swing on over to the other camera because here I've got Zobek Clockwork City. A few things I do want to mention before we dive on in. First of all, the fine folks over at Cobalt Press were kind enough to provide me with this review copy, but neither I nor anyone else affiliated with the gaming gang has received any other sort of compensation for me to share this review with you. These days, it's very important that you know that. Also, we're not going to look at each and every page, but I do want to give you a very good feel for what's in this supplement and share my thoughts about it. Lastly, nearly half the page count is devoted to adventures. So if you are a player hoping that your dungeon master is going to pick up Zobek Clockwork City or Maybe they already have, and they're about to run some of these adventures. I would definitely recommend Tune Out Now, because as much as I'm going to stay spoiler-free, there are going to be some spoilers. And you don't want the surprises of an adventure ruined simply because you're watching this review. Now, having said that, you might want to let your Dungeon Master know about this video if they haven't already picked up Zobat Clockwork City, so they can approach this supplement and make an informed buying decision. All right, so let's hop on in. First thing I will mention is that like just about everything that I've ever encountered from Cobalt Press, production quality, top notch, really well done. I definitely like this fold out map we've got of the free city of Zobek. Very, very cool. We actually see this again uh, at the back of the book, but it's not a fold-out. It's not like a gateway sort of map. We've got loads and loads of artists who took part in this project as well. I'm not going to read through their names because, unfortunately, I would probably butcher at least half of their names. But I do want to share a little bit of credit with them, of course. So if you are not familiar with Zobek, it is a free city. So that means it has no political affiliation with any other sort of country, nation, anything like that in the world of Midgard, which is the default setting for Cobalt Press releases. So it is essentially its own nation, even though it is only a city. And we're going to get a lot of information about the city in the first portion of this book. So I should mention, 
that there have been other Zobeck releases from Cobalt Press over the years. I am not familiar with them. I'm not sure if any of those were for 5e D&D or if this is the only volume that is for 5e D&D. So I can't answer any questions people might have in the comment section regarding, well, what's different between Clockwork City and other releases for Zobeck over the years. I got to be honest, I don't know. I'm not familiar with those products. What I can tell you is you've got plenty at your fingertips for urban adventuring with Zobeck Clockwork City. One of the things I really like about this volume is that we go into detail about the various different districts and NPCs and so forth in Zobeck without getting too far into the weeds. And I'll mention some releases that have come out. Oh, some of them are pretty old. In fact, all of them I'm going to mention are pretty old. But if you're familiar with, say, the city-state of the Invincible Overlord from Judges Guild or the Lankmar release from TSR for D&D, or AD&D, I should say, were both of those. Or we also had Thieves' World with the City of Sanctuary from Chaosium, which was actually one of the first really big-named uh, city releases for Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. They actually had rules for you to go and populate just about every single building that was in the city. So we actually had, like, Lankmar had a map where it already had some pre-populated buildings, and then other buildings you were supposed to roll up to populate. Well, thankfully, we don't get that far into the minutia about the free city of Zobek. So you're going to have information about the government as well as important guilds, gangs as well. In Zobek, one of the cool things, too, is we have 14 adventures later on in the book. They range from levels 1 through 11. But the adventuring in Zobek does not begin and end with those 14 adventures. We have loads and loads of adventure hooks throughout the Gazetteer portion of the book, as well as a lot of interior maps of different buildings, uh, important locations, as an example, right here. So I thought that was very, very nicely done as well. As far as the city itself, it is the Clockwork City. So we have Clockwork Mages, and we have gear-forged uh, characters and NPCs. And I'll be the first to point out that I'm not necessarily someone who's real big on, say, clock punk or steampunk intermixing with my high fantasy role playing. So the clock punk aesthetic is present in Zobek, but thankfully it's not overwhelming. I would maybe tone it down a little bit for myself running uh, adventures in Zobek. Clockwork City, or if I were using the city as kind of a base of operations. Just wanted to mention that. I should also mention, if you are maybe relatively new to dungeon mastering or game mastering, period, urban adventures can be very unique, but they can also be a little difficult, especially for newcomers to the hobby, uh, because they are quite different than a wilderness adventure or a dungeon delve. And a lot of times it's mainly because you have a lot of NPCs that you're juggling, a lot of locations also, and you really, really want to provide that kind of sight, sounds, and smells of the city. And that can be a little overwhelming for a dungeon master or a game master. So... Thankfully, we have a lot that you can pull from, a lot that you can utilize throughout this early portion of the book. 
to bring the city to life for your players. And I like that quite a lot. There's a lot of gameable content that is in here as well. It's not all just a gazetteer with adventures. So we have uh, the Gear Forged. We have different feats, different backgrounds. Here's our clockwork mages. We've got the various different magic items, magic spells. So there is a ton going on. Here's some of the, the spells, the clockwork spells. We have loads of important NPCs that you can utilize. One of the NPCs I think is really cool, very interesting, and it's kind of funny because if you follow the gaming gang, you know that I'm not necessarily really big on like anthropomorphic animals in my fantasy role-playing games, unless it's, you know, they, it's somebody who's been cursed by the Fae or something like that. But we have this Mouse King, and I, I know I passed the Mouse King by. And I found it very interesting because the Mouse King, who is a mouse? It's, it's not like a, a human-sized mouse or anything like that. But the Mouse King rules over all the rodents of the city, and they're actually even humans and other species that worship the Mouse King. And there's an adventure that has to do with the Mouse King in here. And uh, I like that quite a lot. That's one of the aspects of Cobalt Press and their Midgard setting is on one hand, it's got kind of a fairy tale vibe to it. But then on the other hand, it's kind of dark and gritty in some ways too. And I, I like just the balance between the two quite a lot. The city of Zobek is kind of gritty and real. I should mention that there are references to mature themes within this book. I mean, nothing that I'd be concerned about, you know, a preteen reading or anything like that. But there are slavers. There is slavery. There is prostitution. And those things are referred to in Zobek Clockwork City, which it's it's a living, breathing city, you would think. Cr you know, crime, there's crime throughout. So, of course, these are things that are going to be touched upon in the Gazetteer portion. And I, I appreciate the fact that Cobalt Press treats their readers as adults. Now, of course, I understand a lot of people out there they don't want slavery in their game worlds. Completely understand that. Toss it out. Just because it's mentioned in this book doesn't mean you must utilize it in your game world. Just ignore it. Or anything else that might make you feel uncomfortable or possibly make your players feel uncomfortable. Just discard it. Don't worry about it. So we have, as I mentioned before, we have 14 adventures. All of these adventures are, are pretty good. There are no losers among the 14. Of course, there are some that are obviously better than others. Like I said, I really like that Mouse King adventure. I also like the fact that we have a wide spectrum of styles of adventures and genres of adventures here. I also appreciate that some of them are a little more lighthearted or lightweight or kind of veering more towards a fairy tale vibe. And others are a bit more intense and grim and gritty. So you've got a really nice spectrum to work with throughout. Now, there's one adventure in here that I get a kick out of. It's called The Fish and the Rose. Or maybe it's, maybe it's The Rose and the Fish. Oh, here we go right here. So it's the fish in the rose. And once again, I'm trying to stay away from spoilers, but there's this famous painting and it's the fish in the rose. And it's a painting of, you guessed it, a fish and a rose. And unfortunately we don't have an image of it in this book because I would have loved to have seen it. But the, the painting is supposed to be just awful. It's supposed to be really garish and just, like, 
not pleasant to look at, but everybody wants to possess it. They don't necessarily want to display it, but everybody wants to possess it because it has a magical property for its owner. So I like that. Something else I, I found interesting about these adventures, here's our Mouse King adventure, by the way, a rose by any other name. Uh, this this is a, a bit fave related as well. There are some Gear Forge related adventures. Once again, the designers don't go overboard with the Gear Forged aspect, which I mean, even if they did, it'd be fine. I just I would tweak it for my own version of Zobek or the free city of Zobek if I were using it in uh, my fantasy campaigns. But one of the things I was going to say that I really do appreciate with the adventures throughout is that even though there isn't an underlying theme that runs through those 14 adventures to tie them together, you could easily run them back to back to back, etc. I personally probably wouldn't. I would probably interspace a little bit of of wilderness adventuring and meh, a little bit of dungeon delving. But this makes for a fantastic book if you want to focus on urban adventures. And I got to be honest, I said it before, I love urban adventures and they can be very, very memorable. We even have some new rules for chases that is included in this book. Something else I'll mention as far as the adventures there are kind of some nods to fairy tales, or I guess we could say there's, we can tell there's some inspiration from not only fairy tales, but uh, historical uh, situations and villains and events and whatnot. Uh, as an example, we've got a couple of adventures. One, uh, you can tell is kind of inspired by Sweeney Todd. And then, of course, you probably just saw there's also another adventure called Ripper, which, of course, has some inspiration from Jack the Ripper. So we're going to wrap up with uh, some monsters and NPCs. We got a bit of a bestiary here. I will say I wish there had been more images throughout the book because artwork-wise, at least in my opinion, it's a little bit light. It's not... Her, you know, like terribly uh, under-illustrated or anything like that. Here's that map again. But I do wish there had been a bit more artwork throughout Zobek Clockwork City. All right, so that is the book. Let's swing on over to the other camera because I'm going to share some final thoughts as well as my review score. Well, if you follow the gaming gang, you already know that I've said this quite a few times, that in my opinion, the best content currently being published for 5e Dungeons and Dragons is not coming from Wizards of the Coast. It is coming from third-party publishers. And I've got to say, Cobalt Press is leading the pack. Outside of, what, the Scarlet Citadel? which I liked, I just wasn't blown away by. And I mentioned I had some quibbles and I wouldn't run it as written as far as an adventure book. Outside of that, I've been pretty much blown away by everything I've had an opportunity to check out from Cobalt Press. And I'll tell you what, Zobek Clockwork City is no exception. Granted, there are a few things that I would change. And yes, as I said, I'm not real big on like a clock punk aesthetic. So I had toned that down a little bit. But there is so much inside here that game masters and dungeon masters can utilize. We've got 14 good to great adventures. We've got loads of new uh, gear and spells and backgrounds and feats. So we've got tons of gameable material. And then we have a very interesting location that is dealt with in depth 
with the free city of Zobek itself. I love it. I really, really do like this quite a lot. I even have to say that if you're running a fantasy role-playing game, even if it's not 5e D&D, you really should consider putting this on your shelf because there is a lot of content here that you can crib or convert to the fantasy role-playing game of your choice. I really like the Midgard world setting from Cobalt Press also. So you want to keep that in mind. So on a scale of 0 to 10, I give Zobek Clockwork City a 9 out of 10. I highly, highly recommend it. Like I said, I got eh, little quibbles, but nothing tremendous. Nothing that would stop me from recommending this with a huge thumbs up. All right, that is it for this time out. If you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, don't forget, ding that bell. Because it will not only let you know when I upload videos such as this review. It will also inform you when my live stream, the Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs currently Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in tabletop gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more that you won't find here on the YouTube channel. Thank you very much for hanging out with me to check out this review. And until I see you next time, here's hoping each and every one of you gets to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, that's okay, you don't have to leave just yet. In fact, why don't you subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel right here, or take a peek at the latest live stream, or even find out what YouTube recommends you check out from the channel. And of course, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thanks again for watching.